What is up, guys? This is Pete Characters Clark, and welcome back to the Carrot Poker Podcast. This is episode number 72, and the title of this episode is Modern 3 Bet Ranges, which is going to refer to two things. It's going to refer to, well, what, what it says on the tin Modern 3 Bet Ranges. I'm going to talk about what those are, how we should 3 bet these days, now that we have better knowledge of things like the rake that we pay, um, and also now that we have solvers that have solved free flops, such as Monker Solver and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into any theoretical detail on what solvers say, but I am going to outline roughly what a good competent three bet strategy is going to look like for micro stakes and small stakes at least. Um, and the second thing that modern three bet ranges actually refers to is a new product that I've just brought out. And the good news for you guys is that this new product is 100% free. Modern three bet ranges is also the name of a 11 or 12 page, I can't remember, um, little miniature course on how to three bet in the modern day um within the pages of that course you can see the front cover there on your screen if you're watching this on youtube if you're just listening you can imagine it. it's got like a little range grid in black and orange then the carrot colors it looks pretty pretty nifty right but if you're if you're looking at that then inside there will be more like that but fleshed out with actual hand grids so we're going to be talking about 12 pages of hand charts with complete explanations as to why we're using them. So you can see this is like almost an update to the three bet section of the Grinders manual. Um but I like to see it as a new product because it does talk about three betting in a bit more of an advanced way, but at the same time you don't actually have to understand everything that goes into these three bet ranges, the ingredients of them, in order to apply them very successfully and just do really well. So to pick that up all you need to do is head on over to carrotcorner.com um and click the product link for modern three bet ranges you can pay whatever you want for it um so basically it's free but if you want to donate something to the cause then it's always much appreciated you can do that via the selfie store and to access the selfie store just either click the link underneath this video or um on my website once you've clicked on the product at carrotcorner.com you'll be able to to go there via that way as well um so i'm going to talk first off about why i made this product and why i decided to teach modern three bet ranges in a free course um, I wanted to make a free product for my website that would allow people to get to know me first off. That's like the marketing explanation. Um, the specific choice to do that on modern three bet ranges was basically just from me harvesting a lot of data from private coaching sessions. Um, and very much one of the most common leaks that the student will have when they first come to me for coaching is that they don't three bet enough or they three bet completely the wrong shape of range or they just have bad ideas about what hands they can and can't 3-bet in a certain situation. And this leak is really, really destructive. Um, basically, the leaks that occur in the most common situations, so if you can imagine that a leak on the flop is going to be usually more costly than a leak in the river because the flop happens so many, many more times than the river does, um, a leak pre-flop, by the same token, is going to have an even bigger impact. So when people have a leak with such a frequent common spot as 3-betting, it can really destroy their potential as a poker player and that is indeed one of the first things I like to fix in my students game when they first come to me for coaching um, and the way I do that is to take them through this product and show them why everything is the case but not just that I also like to show them the exceptions to that I like to build on it and show them how they could apply the same kind of thing to squeeze ranges and things like that um, this is not an exhaustive list of every single three bet spot that you're ever going to find in this product modern three bet ranges it's actually just the most common spots that you're going to that you're going to face. The 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 course takes you through facing opens um from each of the opening positions under the gun, hijack, cutoff, button, small blind. Um and it it takes care to differentiate between times we're in the small blind, times we're in position, times we're in the big blind, um, that kind of thing. So basically in this course what you're going to be looking at is different shapes of range depending on your position in the big blind. The range is a little more polarized, a little more selective. And when you're either in position or you're in the small blind, what you're going to see is that you're going to be mostly entering the pot as a three bet or not at all. And for that reason, the, the range is going to be what we call linear. So starting from aces and working its way down to the weakest hand that you choose to include within that three bet range. But people have a big leak in this respect. They, they tend to use too tight of a range in many situations, particularly when they are in position on the button, the cutoff facing an open. And a lot of people get into the nasty habit of just flatting lots out of the big blind because they can and not three betting much there. So in the in modern three bet ranges, I take care to show the reader exactly how they should be formulating some lighter three bets to apply pressure and how to do that with the right frequencies. This product uses frequencies a lot. So it sort of says that this is a hand that can be three bet 
you know x amount of the time whether that be 50 percent or 25 percent or or 100 percent of the time these are the three frequencies it uses and the reason that it does that is that i want to show you that in many spots actually calling and three betting are really quite close but three betting is like out of the big line that's the case certainly but in position it's really three betting and folding that become close and calling is often a lower ev play um, and there's lots of reasons for that. So why is it bad then that my students do a lot of cold calling and not very much three betting? What causes that to be a problem? Well, when we enter the pot by calling, what we have to understand is that we're actually paying break on every single situation where we get to see the flop there. And if we don't get to see the flop, it's even worse because usually that means that we're being squeezed, right? And we just have to fold right off the bat. Um, if we do get to see the flop having cold called, meaning flatted arrays from the button, the cutoff, um some some position like that cold meaning we don't have a blind invested to give us a discount um if that is the case then we are going to be basically paying rake 100 percent of the time rake is really really bad if you ever look at how much you've won from a particular game or stake and then you decide to check that out by looking at how much rake you've paid you'll often find that the rake you've paid is three or four times um the amount of profit you've made in that game and the reason for that is that at, game, at a stake like 10 and L, rake ranges between like 9 and 12 BB per 100, big blinds per 100 hands, which is a lot of money um, to be paying in rake. And the average win rate is something like 3 or 4 big blinds per 100 for a good, strong, profitable player. So you can see why the rake paid is often 2, 3, 4 times the, the profit they've actually made. And that's very normal. However, you can reduce the impact that rake has on your game by seeing the flop less. We have this thing called no flop, no drop which is the standard rake structure on most mainstream sites. Maybe not everywhere. Please check with your, your poker client, your poker site before you make that assumption. But what that means is that if we don't go to the flop, we don't pay any rake. And therefore, three betting the hands that we're playing instead of cold calling when we are not incentivized by having posted a big blind to call that is, is going to be a really good thing because it's going to mean that we have this branch of the EV tree where villain just folds and we pick up the pot pre. And guess what? We get to keep 100% of the profits we make by picking up villains open and the dead small and big blind. And that's really cool because in the long term, that equates to not being raked in a really, really, really common spot where rake adds up eventually to be 13 BBs per 100, 11 BBs per 100, 9 BBs per 100, whatever it happens to be before rake back. Um, and that's obviously really, really great if we can avoid that. So for that reason, the default approach in modern 3-bet ranges in this product that's now available for free on my site is that we are not going to enter the pot by cold calling unless we have exceptions. And I don't go into the exceptions there. That's something I do with my students when they have the leak where they three bet too much. First, where they don't three bet enough, sorry. First off, I get them three betting too much. And then I show them the exceptions where they should cold call rather than the other way around. That is by far the best way of doing it. So when you are in position against the open, please try to think of it as I need exceptional circumstances here to make a cold call meaning I need weaker players behind or I need the opener to be a weaker player against whom we have lots of implied odds or I need to think that there's no fold equity with a certain hand yet it is really playable or something exceptional that makes it the case that I don't just want to play a three bit or fold strategy with every hand in my potential range. Okay, hopefully that part makes sense. Um, the next thing I'm going to discuss with you guys is the nature of the three bet strategies in this product, in this course. The three bet strategies I recommend in modern three bet ranges are slightly too wide from a game theory optimal perspective. Now, don't be put off by that. Don't be thinking, why is this coach recommending that I play too wide of a range? Surely that's bad. That's going to cost me EV. It's going to cost me money. No, it's actually the opposite. It's going to make you more money than playing GTO in the games that you play, assuming that you play somewhere below about 200 NL, 500 NL zoom on stars, which are, let's face it, some of the toughest games that run regularly on the internet. Obviously, there are tougher games like 10, 20, 25, 50, 50, 100, 100, 200, but they don't run very often unless there's a weaker player to stir up the action or something. So of the games that run most commonly, um, everywhere up to about 50, 100 NL, people are going to be playing quite badly against three bets. Obviously, less badly the higher you go. At 10 NL, they, they play way too tight against three bets. They almost never four bet as a bluff, apart from a few regs who maybe overdo it or something like that. Whereas at 50 NL, they do overfold to three bets a bet, or at least they call and then overfold on the flop, meaning fold more often than is optimal. So in any game where people are not going to react well to three bets and where there's high rake, and those two things are more true the lower you play, the wider the range of hands you want to three bet and the less you want to cold call. 
So for that reason, these ranges are looser than what you would see in a solver. They are looser than what you would get away with playing against Linus Love or Ben Sulski or any of the top No Limit pros. But against the people you'll be playing against who are even strong but not elite opposition, they're going to work really, really well, especially in this high rake environment where the alternative line of calling is necessarily always lower EV due to the rake paid when you see the flop and therefore have the drop of the rake going into the, the casino's tables um, box of, of money, basically. It's where that comes from, the drop. Um, so, so yeah, basically what we want to acknowledge is that Playing wider than game theory is a good idea in any game where there are more amateur players who are trying to be tight aggressive. And in games where people are more loose aggressive and more hungry for EV and, you know, very strong, we need to be careful and maybe go back to a GTO fortress until we figure out what's going on. But the ranges in this book are definitely, or a little book, I don't know what you call a, a, a non-fiction small book, I want to call it a novella, but it's not quite a novel, whatever. Um, in this miniature course, let's call it that are very aggressive and i think you'll find that what happens when you start applying them is that you have a lot of success and the reason for that is is basically i would say threefold firstly the population is not used to maniacal three betting and i'm not saying that the ranges here are maniacal but they are very very aggressive and the population on average is going to be put out of its comfort zone and I have this idea that I teach my students called the unfamiliar unfamiliarity exploit, which is basically that when an opponent is unfamiliar with your strategy or hasn't seen the amount of pressure or the nature of the pressure you're exerting upon them, they're very likely to crumble, play badly, overreact, underreact. Usually just overfold is the most common thing. That's why overbets, when they were first discovered, were so, so lucrative because they took the population by surprise. And all of a sudden, regs were facing overbets and folding 80% of their range when they should only be folding, I don't know, 66, let's say, um, or 58, depending on the size of the overbet um, or whatever. So basically, a very aggressive three bet strategy is a bit like that. It takes the population by storm, it makes, it kicks up a kind of tornado that they're not expecting, and it will cause the average reg to overfold and just donate you money. So it's going to give you a really good little income in the form of making regs uncomfortable and causing them to make mistakes. Secondly, a more aggressive than GTO 3-bet strategy is good because of rate considerations. Like I said, you pay less rake, so calling is less good anyway. So when we're mixing between calling and 3-betting, we want to favor 3-betting, all else being equal. Thirdly, we exploit the type of regs that you will find within the population at low stakes. So this is more than just saying we exploit them because they're unfamiliar with our line. This is actually saying that the very nature of a 10 NL, 5 NL, 25 NL reg is kind of risk adverse, trying to play tight aggressive, trying to stay out of uncomfortable situations. And, you know, they've not yet figured out how to really open up their game in a really profitable way. Otherwise, they'd be playing much higher. That's basically what separates, you know, a, a break even to winning player at 25 NL who's classed as a reg from a 100 NL crusher who's classed as a reg. The latter has opened up their game and is far more aggressive, inventive, creative, applies more pressure, puts opponents to the test, makes them feel unfamiliar and uncomfortable, whereas the 25 and L guy is basically, you know, has some aggression in his game and is not like very, very placid, but is definitely too passive in missing investments that would cause opponents discomfort and win more pots. So yeah, modern three bet ranges, you know, in this in this course, we are recommending playing a nature of three bet three bet game that will exploit the average ABC, not too inventive, not too comfortable reg. Um, fourth, but not last but not least, the fourth reason is that it will give you a sexy red line. I am so sorry to have said that. I wrote it down when I was having breakfast this morning. I was like, sexy red line, I want to talk about that in my podcast. I thought that's the corniest thing you've ever come up with, Pete. It's such a cliche. Like, I'm going to sell you this by saying that, okay, I'm not, it's free. So I'm not really selling you it, but um, I'm going to big up my, my little course here by saying it will make your red line sexy. But let's face it, we love having a nice red line because we all want to be that guy that gets all of his EV from fold equity. You know, We all dream of being that kind of baller with the positive red line um, and the break-even blue line. Red line being money we make not at showdown, so money we make by making people fold. If you aren't familiar with Poker Tracker 4, hold a manager, hand to note, things like that. The red line is just how much you lose or win not at showdown. So the more aggressive you are, the more you win, the less you lose. Um, and it is the line that we all care about and we want to see that improving because honestly 
the red line is the line that kills the student. Like I, I have a lot of students that play 25 and L, 10 and L, 50 and L, and they're all good at getting value, or at least a lot of them are. And if they're not, we deal with that quickly. But their red line is a problem. And this is just one of the things that will help you have a much better, more steady, reliable red line. And it's just super important. So doing a lot more three betting. Let's touch a little bit about big blind now because I did talk earlier strategically about how to play in position as there would be cold caller or, or three better, but we haven't talked much about big blind play. Um, so in the big blind, we are incentivized to flat a lot, and you'll see that the last few few ranges in the modern ranges three bet um, course are basically more polarized, meaning that they, instead of mixing hands between call and raise, like call and three bet, like we do when we're on the button against under the gun and we're not flatting anything. Sorry, between fold and raise. So when we're on the button against under the gun, we're mixing between fold and raise. We're either folding ace jack suited or let's say ace ace five suited, or we're three betting it as a sort of bluff. Um, or we're either folding pocket eight, so we're three betting it, or we're folding ace queen off, or we're three betting it. We're mixing. Um, when we are actually in the big blind, we are going to be mixing three bet with call because we're allowed to call so often so there when button opens and we're big blind and we have a hand like let's say 10 8 of clubs we're probably going to be sometimes calling that hand and sometimes three betting that hand depending on what we rolled on our num random number generator who the opponent is would be an even better way of deciding do they fold too much what's the pool doing and um, what's our image like if we're playing a regular table all these kind of things but basically calling and three betting can be close and ev and we need to pick which one is better so our lighter three bets from the big blind actually come from hands that we would sometimes call, but this time we've decided to three bet because we think that while the hand is behind the three bet calling range for a villain, we are going to be flopping well, realizing equity quite well. That's why we pick, we favor the suited holdings normally when we make these so-called three bet bluffs. And um, the way this is different from what you may have seen like way back in the day with polar three betting is that polar, um, as I defined it in Grider's Manual and what it used to mean historically was that we were never three betting a hand that was good enough to call as a bluff. That's now no longer the case. We're actually realizing that hands have good EV as both a three bet and a call, and there's nothing wrong with mixing them. And unless fold equity is sky high, it's not theoretically great to three bet hands that are too weak to call because that just involves building a bigger pot with a very, very weak hand indeed that wasn't even good enough to call. That is clearly only good if we have a lot of fold equity. And that's why in the Grinders Manual, we only recommend that pure polar, old school polar strategy, three betting hands that would otherwise be folds. You know, mixing fold and three bet um, as a bluff, we only do that when there's a ton of fold equity above 60% fold to three bet after open stat, just to draw the line in the sand somewhere. But basically, the idea in the big blind is that there are hands that can either be called or three bet, um, closing the action against a reasonable size, and we will three bet them more often when we think there's more fold equity and call them more often when we think there's less. And the type of hands I'm talking about here are things like, um, Six seven suited, seven five suited, ace three suited, king five suited. These kind of hands that could be your classic vintage three bet bluffs. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, and you guys are now excited to hop on over to carrotcorner.com or to the selfie store there and grab yourself a modern three bet ranges um, free file. And um, when you do that, there is a promotion that's going to pop up, and it's going to offer you half price off of the first episode of Pio versus Population. If you don't know what Pio versus Population is, I'd recommend picking that up for half price. It's a bit of a bargain. It's basically a solver-based magazine. You don't need a solver yourself to use it. You don't need Pio. You don't even need to know what Pio is. All you need to do is read it and see how I'm using a solver and explain what everything means in the solver. It's very, very simple interface. I'm not going into the inputs of the solver or anything like that. I'm just saying this is what it would do in this situation. So we're basically looking at how a computer poker expert would play a balanced strategy in a certain situation. Then we're looking at how the regs in your pool don't do that. And then we're talking about how we smash them for failing to resemble that GTO strategy in any way. So Pyro versus Population is a great, great way to start gaining edge. It's just reading that. There's four episodes currently. I may be making more in the future, though currently it's on hold for now because I have another product in mind and I can't do everything at once. But basically, if you start reading those four episodes, you will have gained a very rich understanding of how the common reg messes up four really common situations um on the flop the turn four bet pots three bet pots all these different different situations i'd recommend getting those reading them and just smashing the population using the exploits outlined there there'll be more episodes one day just currently on hold so when you buy when you get modern three bet ranges or you donate and get it whichever you prefer 
um, you'll be asked if you want to pick that up for half price. I'd recommend it if you like it. It's a good way to see if you like the series as well. And if you do, you can then pick up episodes two, three, and four. They're only £4.49 each, and they'll be discounted to two, um, two pounds, whatever. Um, whatever half of that is, my brain isn't working today. Um, like about two twenty four. Um, which is a bit of a steal to be honest. So check it out. Um, the other thing I'm doing with my products right now on my website in the store is that if you pick up the Grinders Manual, and if you don't know what that is, it's my textbook, highly rated, um, very popular, basically introductory, but gets quite advanced as well, comprehensive course on so no a limit hold'em six max cash games online, although it can be applied to other formats as well, and it certainly has helped live players, tournament players, all sorts of things by teaching them the fundamentals in a really good way. If you're looking for a text to get you started, a poker book to get you up and running, that is the book to pick up. It's $39.99, but if you grab it on my store, you'll also get the sequel to that, 100 Hands, which is a hand history review book with 100 essays on 100 Hands for 25% off. So these are just a couple of the deals I'm running right now in the store. Go ahead and click the link underneath this video. Head on over to the store and get yourself a free copy of Modern 3-Bit Ranges at least, and I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, I will be back with another podcast next week that I've already arranged. I know I keep saying this, but I really do intend to get this podcast up and running again. It's a great way to reach out to you guys. I'd be silly not to. And you guys always give me really positive feedback on this podcast. If you'd like to get in touch with me and give me some feedback, that's admin at carrotcorner.com. You can email me or head on over to my website. and You can contact me via the form there as well. Um, and if you want to be kept in the loop as to what we're doing at Carrot Corner, go over to the website and the little yellow box at the top. You just want to click subscribe there and then enter your email and you'll be notified of any new products new articles um all kinds of stuff sometimes it's free cool stuff like this modern three bit ranges um book so even if you're not looking to purchase anything it's good to be kept in the loop for the free content all right guys so next monday um this is currently monday the 11th of march so on the 18th i'm recording a podcast with my friend um who is actually a pretty successful lawyer um, and has always done really well in his career, but has struggled a lot with the mental game of poker. And um, we're going to be talking about how a really successful professional can struggle so much in a realm that is so different to real life. and Why people have mental game issues, even when they're super successful in life and they've got this great career um, and family and just everything going well for them, that they can then play poker and feel like they have absolutely, that it's so difficult and it's just so hard to overcome mental game issues. And that's really common, this theme that people who have done well with poker actually struggle quite a lot to do well inside poker so that is going to be our topic and i'm really looking forward to that and it's going to be a fascinating discussion he's a really great guy as well um so we're going to be bringing that to you next week stay tuned for that should be out about a week from from the release date of this um video or podcast depending how you're watching or listening so carrot poker podcast will be back very soon and in the meantime please get in touch and let me know what you make of it so far let me know what you think of modern three bit ranges if you have any questions as well about it please leave them on the thread below. Absolutely fine with that and happy to get back to you guys. And yeah, until then, I will wish you guys good luck at the tables and see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.